this is the the, the topic I am interested in uh, for a couple of years. I am uh, interested generally uh, in the problem of smoking after diagnosis of lung cancer. Uh, many people uh, uh, don't realize that smoking after diagnosis is very harmful. Uh, almost everybody knows that uh, uh, lung cancer is related, strongly related to smoking, and around 80% uh, uh, of lung cancer patients are uh, current or past smokers. But relatively few uh, uh, know that smoke, continuous smoking is uh, also very harmful. Um, we uh, calculate that around 85, 80% of patients believe uh, there is nothing to be gained from uh, quitting after lung cancer diagnosis and less than uh, 50% uh, really quit. Uh, this may be related to the, the difficulty and this discomfort of smoking cessation, which may uh, discourage uh, patients uh, to quit. Uh, in the, in the uh, paper I will present uh, at the ISLC uh, World Lung Cancer Conference, um, I will focus on uh, on the impact of tobacco smoking in lung cancer patients administered uh, radiotherapy. Uh, this presentation is based on my own uh, study where uh, uh, in 2002 we published, 2022 we published with one of my students uh, um, an overview uh, where we checked uh, in the lit literature uh, the, the impact of uh, continuous smoking on uh, the outcomes of radiotherapy in various terms, uh, including uh, local and uh, uh, regional and distant uh, control, uh, survival, uh, the risk of secondary malignancies, uh, and uh, tolerance. Uh, uh, of course, uh, for the, for the sake of time, I will uh, only uh, focus on on a couple of aspects. First, um, if we look at the at the studies, of course, these are all uh, retrospective studies. There is no no chance ever to perform a, a randomized study because it's ethically uh, impossible. However, uh, there is a relatively strong evidence from, uh, from past uh, studies where this aspect was uh, analyzed. Uh, we have identified, uh, for example, four uh, studies in which uh, tobacco smoking was uh, evaluated versus local regional and distant control. Three of them showed highly significant uh, association between continuous smoking and uh, and uh, the, the, the increased risk of uh, local regional or uh, distant uh, failure or both. Then uh, we analyzed in total of uh, two, four, six, eight, we identified nine studies in which tobacco smoking was analyzed versus overall survival. And these include, included nine studies in non-small cell lung cancer and uh, two in small cell lung cancer. And uh, the, the population ranged between uh, 62 and more than 500. Uh, out of this, uh, in uh, five studies, there was a highly significant uh, relationship between uh, tobacco smoking and uh, shorter survival. So this is, this is very convincing evidence. Uh, and finally, uh, we analyzed uh, tobacco smoking versus risk of developing second primary cancer. Of course, it relates to uh, uh, patients who were uh, successfully treated with, with, with lung cancer. So these are uh, long-term survivors because only in the third population we may expect uh, uh, the, the second uh, primary. 
And this this uh, analysis included three uh, studies to one in non small cell lung cancer and interestingly two in small cell lung cancer, where the cure is uh, is a rare event. Uh, and uh, in in all studies, there was increased uh, probability of second malignancy, mainly uh, tobacco related malignancies. Uh, and for example, uh, in one study, the, the relative risk in uh, continued uh, smokers versus uh, general population in this case was f uh, five times uh, more than five. Uh, that means five times higher than the in the in the general population. In another study, uh, relative risk was uh, nine uh, times. Higher this this study including small cell lung cancer uh, with more than six hundred patients, so it was uh, nine times uh, higher than normal population in ceased population, and twenty one times in continued smokers versus general population, and the third study uh, in the third study hazard risk in current smokers versus non smokers was uh, four. 0.3, that means four times higher. Uh, we also analyzed uh, com uh, treatment tolerance and uh, complications, and in most studies also complications rate uh, and treatment uh, tolerance were, uh, were uh, in favor of those uh, who quit uh, smoking shortly uh, before uh, uh, commencing radiotherapy. Of course, these studies have some limitations. This uh, series are relatively small. As I mentioned, there were no controlled uh, randomized studies, uh, so there was a possibility of uncontrolled uh, confounding. Uh, there were also some inconsistent definitions of quitting in particular studies, and uh, most of them uh, had no biochemical confirmation. Nevertheless, uh, the relationships uh, seem to be uh, very strong. And uh, we also uh, wondered uh, whether this increased risk or decreased risk of um, uh, decreased efficacy of cancer treatment in, in continuous smoker is increased to to the risk of cardiac or respiratory uh, respiratory events or second primary cancers or, or poor treatment compliance uh, to due to increased toxicity or progressing disease by tobacco derived uh, carcinogens which is also a known um, uh, a known phenomenon or neoangiogenesis uh, uh, due to promotion of tumor growth by nicotine, or but lifetime modeling showed that, that this was mostly increased uh, likelihood of cancer progression. So our take home messages are that smoking has a devastating impact on tumor control, survival, and the incidence of second primary tumors in patients uh, managed uh, with radiotherapy and quitting smoking after diagnosis is uh, an important opportunity to, to improve survival. Therefore, patients who continue smoking should be offered individualized pharmacologic and behavioral therapy to assist in a uh, quitting uh, process. So my main message is that it's never too late to quit smoking. Even if you have cancer, if you, even if uh, even if uh, uh, your, 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 you have a chance for cure, you can largely increase this chance, uh, never too late.